Hi everybody, it's Tess at Love This Yarn and this morning I am doing your Outlander Cal tutorial. Can y'all believe it? Mm, finally. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, life gets in the way, doesn't it? Now, I just want to let you guys know, um, those of you that I spoke with this morning, if you were at Ginger's Live, um, Ginger's the Yarn Geek, if you were at her live, and you know, we're a little family over there, um, you all know I talked about my son's accident that he had last night. So, I just want to kind of quickly let everyone know that, um, he's doing great, uh, I checked on him all night long. He did fine. Um, he woke up this morning uh, feeling okay. You know, he was just shaken up because being only 18 years old and that being his, you know, first accident and um, and being such a incredibly awful uh, accident as far as the car goes. <laughs> um, you know, um, when he called us and told us that he had had an accident, of course I was worried sick, right? I mean, any parent would be. But when we got out there to Washington, uh, where the accident happened, um, and we saw his car, uh, I was very thankful because, uh, I think God was really watching over him because his car is totaled. I mean, the whole front end is gone, you know. So, yeah, um, he walked away from it, I mean, miraculously. <laughs> so, um, God is good. God is good. All right. So, anyway, thanks, everybody, for all the well wishes for my baby boy. I really appreciate that tremendously. And, um, yeah, <laughs> I do. Now, for the good news, um, we're older and we have really good insurance. So, that car is going to get replaced. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Whew. Lordy, lordy. You know, when it's raining and pouring down rain like that and your, your child goes out in the car I mean, don't y'all worry? I bet every one of you worry, right? So, I was like that last night. And when he left, I even made a, a special effort to say to him, you be real careful now. And, you know, he is. He's a good little driver. He really is. Uh, we hired a driver, in, a driving instructor to teach him that came highly recommended. And Mason did great. He did great driving. So... It wasn't his fault. It was just the circumstances and with the um, highway, the lanes go down uh, and with the pouring rain and all of that, it just, it was a mess. It was a mess. But yeah, he walked away. So all was good. And um, yeah, so that's all we're going to say about that. But thank you, all of you. I really appreciate those well wishes. So, um, oh, what I'm knitting? Ross hat. Ross Ross smells like yarn. Love that guy. You guys go check out his channel. This is a Ross hat. It's the only hat that I knit. I love it. I got it memorized. So, I just knit it without even thinking about it. I can knit this in my sleep. And I have. That's what I'm talking about. Easy hat pattern, right? Okay, now today it's all about the crochet. We're going to make this Outlander cow, okay? Now, if you Google a picture from season one, if you Google the character Claire Frazier, Outlander season one, you will get pictures of her wearing a cow that looks exactly like this. And I designed this on purpose to mimic her knitted cowl. Ugh. 
I'm tired. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, this is how I designed it. So it would look just like it. And it's very drapey and loose. And that's the way it's supposed to be. Now, the color I chose is called Smoke. It's a premier chunky, uh, Serenity chunky yarn. Let's see. This is what it is. It's in the Deborah Norville collection. And it is a chunky five, and you will need a chunky five. Doesn't have to be this yarn, any chunky five. And you know, if you want to make this exactly like Claire Frazier, the character uh, in the Outlander series, if you want to make it exactly the same, you'll need more of a brownish gray. It's like a gray with a lot, like a heavy undertone of brown in it. Um, yeah, that's what you'll need. So, hmm, I did not have anything like that. Although I, my knit crate that I got might have something like that in there. I'll have to check that out again. Okay, so this is the yarn. Debbie Norville. Who doesn't like Debbie? Whoop. Yeah, all right. If you remember her, if you're older and you remember Debbie... Okay, so heavyweight, not a heavyweight, mm, chunky weight, five yarn, okay? And you will need one and a half balls. And, and these balls are 109 yards. So I would say if you had about, probably about between 160 and 175 yards, you'll have plenty, Okay, and I actually thought I was going to use more, like originally I said like 230 yards. No, 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 it doesn't take that much. It takes about 160, 175 yards, somewhere in between there. Okay, so this is the yarn we're going to use. And what you're going to need, you're going to need a size U.S. size PQ crochet hook which is a 15 millimeter. Now, I noticed that some hooks say they're like a 15.5 or a 15.75. That's fine. That is close enough. So no need to worry, okay? You just need something in that 15 mil range. Now, when you make your foundation row, you need to be a loosey-goosey with those chains. Okay, and if you're not a loosey-goosey, if you're all up tight with it, you're going to need to go up on your hook size. Now, this is a U.S. size uh, 35, I believe. Let me see. Oh, Lordy, I can't see it. Yeah, it's a U.S. size. I think they're calling it a U.S. size S, which is... Uh, or let's see, what are they? Yeah, S35, which is a 19 millimeter. Now this is a hook from Lion Brand and I got it at Joann's. It's a 19 millimeter hook. You can use this to make sure that your stitches are looser for your foundation row. So you would use this to make your foundation row and then you would switch over to this, okay? When you actually start chaining, I mean crocheting, la 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 la. All right, so chain only, crocheting. All right, and that's only if you're really tight with your stitches. Y'all know who you are, you tight people out there. You know who you are, right? Okay, so I am not a tight crocheter. I'm more casual, laid back, loose. So I'm going to just use my 15 mil for the whole thing. Okay. But like I said, if you need to go up on a size, make sure you don't forget to switch over to this after you make your foundation chain. Okay. So that's what you're going to need. As far as hook size, you know what you need for yarn. You need a bulky weight 5, 160 to 175 yards. 
You will also need, this is my little, um, this is my little to-go kit. I have everything I need in here. You're also going to need a little pair of scissors to cut your yarn. You're going to need your darning needle. I have one in here. You're also going to need um, two stitch markers, and I do explain why. I have mine in here. Whoops. It says happy pills, but really what it is is happy stitch markers. And my stitch markers are happy because they're in this cute little box. See, look at that. I got my stitch markers there. So you will need two stitch markers. And by the way, thank you, sweet Jill. Thank you, honey, for sending this to me, along with all that yummy yarn. You are amazing. Girlfriend. Okay. So, that's all you need. And we're going to get started. Okay? So thanks, everybody. And gather up your supplies and come right back. I'll see you in a minute. All right? Okay, everybody, I'm back. Now I have my 15 mil hook, my yarn that I'm using, my five bulky weight yarn, and my two stitch markers, okay? And what we're going to do first is we are going to pull out some yarn here. Let's see. I've got a center pull here. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so I'm just going to pull out some yarn, and you're going to want to leave a really long tail because you're going to be using this tail to sew your project up at the end, to seam your two sides together. So we're going to crochet this flat, and then we're going to seam up the side. So what you need is probably at least, I would say about a, a yard and about a yard of um, string. And if you take your yarn and hold it in your fingertips, stretch your arm out and then bring it up to your nose, that's generally about a yard unless you're a teeny tiny little human being, okay? So, and if you are a teeny tiny little human, like super fun sized, then do that and add a few more inches. All right. So now we're going to make a little slip knot. And everybody knows how to do that, right? So there's our slip knot. Here's our nice long tail. Here's our yarn. I'm throwing it off to my to my uh, left side. And now what we're going to do is we're going to make our foundation chain, our first chain, okay? And what I do is I hang on to my knot, my slip knot. And like I said, we're gonna be real loose, okay? See how I'm real loose here? Don't tell Superman. All right, so real loose, <laughs> and we're just going to keep chaining. Now, when this gets a little bigger, then you're just going to move your hand up. See how I just moved my hand up? And make sure that your chain, your foundation chain stays big, all right? You don't want it to get tiny on you. All right, and just keep going, making those big chains, and you are going, whoops, sorry about that. You're going to chain up 29 chains. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, Ah, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 
and 29 okay so once you get your 29 chains and you're going to measure this out and your 29 chains are probably going to measure about it should measure anyway about 20 inches okay and if it's a little more than 20 inches that's okay Mine's just a tad bit over 20 inches. But now what we're going to do is we're going to turn this chain around to the back. And you see your little bumps? See your little bumps? So instead of chaining through one of the top or the bottom, you're going to chain through the middle bump. Okay? That's where you're going to go in through and start making your stitches. Now you're going to skip your first two stitches and you're going to go into your third stitch. So count from your hook. You're not going to count the loop on your hook. You're going to count one, two. That's your first two. You're going to go in to this third chain right here. And you're going to go in through that middle one. And the reason why, it's going to give your edge a nice pretty look that you're going to want. Okay? So now what we're going to do, once you go in to this right here, we're going to half double crochet. Now these are U.S. terms. So you all living in the U.K., you will want to look up what the U.S. half double crochet is and do that okay <laughs> so we're gonna do that all the way down the row we're just gonna do our half double crochet and you can see I'm I'm keeping my tension just kind of nice and loose but um, you know be conscious of keeping your tension even you don't want some of your stitches to be loosey-goosey and some to be, you know, super tight, right? You want to just try to keep it somewhere in the middle, okay? And uh, just continue on down the row. And when you get to the end, I'm going to give you a little tip that I think is very helpful. All right, so bear with me. And now those of you who are just learning how to crochet, I hope you can see what I'm doing here. Um, your yarn over, which is just simply wrapping your yarn. And then you're going to, on this chain, you're gonna go into this middle bump or this middle loop. So here we go. We're going to go right in there. You're going to stick your hook in there. And then you're going to turn your hook and grab that yarn. Pull it through that loop. Yarn over again. And pull it through all three loops. Okay? And your stitch is born. Alright? So yarn over. Place it through that middle bump. Grab your yarn, pull it through, yarn over, pull through all three loops, and a stitch has been born. Okay, so here we go. We're going to keep going. Remember, you're grabbing this, you're grabbing this middle loop, which looks like a bump. Looks like a little bump sticking up between these two uh, between these two strands of yarn. That's what we're going to use because that's going to make the edge of our cowl prettier. And y'all, when you're spending so much time like this, making this, don't you want it to be pretty? I know I do. Okay? 
So you're going to keep going. We're, we're almost to the end. Um, I am so sorry. You know, this is only my second tutorial that I've done. And I'm kind of new to this whole social media thing. So I really don't know how to edit videos yet. So I can't like speed this up. But that's okay. Because I'm just going to go through this row. And then show you what we're going to do with our stitch markers and why we're going to do it. And then I'm going to give you some more directions. And I'm going to skip ahead for you. Okay? Um, which basically means I'm going to turn off the camera. Like just turn it completely off. And work on this a little bit. And then I'm going to come back to you. Okay? So I want you all to keep working on this as well. And that way, when I come back, we can finish up this cowl. So you're going to continue this uh, foundation chain, this foundation row right here, all the way to the end. And remember, you put on 29 stitches, 29 chains. And then you skipped the first two. So we're going to do a little math. That means you're going to have 27 stitches. Okay? And we want to maintain 27 stitches throughout the course of the video. Alright? And, and throughout the course of making this cowl, which is more important for sure. Right? Okay. So there's our very last stitch. Now, what I want to tell you is we're going to take our stitch marker and when you complete your row, you are going to mark your last stitch. Now, you can see this right here. One and two. These are our chain stitches that gave us the height we needed to make this big puffy stitch, okay? So we don't count these as a stitch. So our first stitch is going to be this stitch right here. So we're going to mark that stitch so that we know where to come back in when we turn our row and come back around. Now, on our last stitch, the same thing. We're going to mark our last stitch that we made, okay? And that's going to be right here. See this very last stitch? We're going to put a little stitch marker here. And by using these stitch markers, you will never have to count your stitches and you will never be off. Meaning that when your cowl is completely finished, it will be even. Unless you just went cray cray with your tension. Okay? And for all y'all newbies out there, your tension is how tightly you make your stitches. So remember, that very first row, it's going to be loosey-goosey. And the rest are going to be just in the medium range. Not too tight, not too loosey-goosey, okay? So that's what we're going to do with this. Now, you're going to chain, you're going to chain one, like this, and you're going to turn your work, okay? Now, I know a lot of you crocheters out there were taught to skip this very first stitch. We are not going to skip this first stitch. We are going to um, go right into this stitch to make to start our second row. And we're going to continue working in to this very first stitch all the way through the cowl until it's completed. Now, the reason for that 
is because when you work into the very first stitch, it makes your it makes your work nice and even on the side, okay? And we want nice and even because when we seam this cowl up, we want to make sure that all of our sides are even, okay? So we are going to yarn over and we are going to go in to the back loop only. Now when you're when you have your work in front of you like this, you see this loop right here. This is your loop. And I've got my finger in it. So you have a stitch that's closest to you, which is this stitch right here. This is the stitch. I'm going to put this in. Hopefully you can see that better. Well, yeah, maybe not. Okay. <laughs> so this stitch is the furthest away. This stitch is closest. So what you want to do is you want to grab that stitch that's furthest away. So that's the stitch we're going to work through, okay? You're not going to do anything with this front stitch. It's just going to hang out and enjoy the ride. You know, think of it like that friend of yours who never has any money, but they always want to go with you when you go out to eat or when you go out for a drink. Or, yeah, you know who I'm talking about, right? that friend. This front loop is that friend. This back loop, this is where the money is. All right. So we're going to only work in the back loop. So once again, we're going to yarn over, yarn over, and we're going to go under, we're going to go in between those two stitches those two in the middle of this loop and we're going to grab that back loop and we're going to go up. We're going to grab our yarn, pull it through that back loop only, yarn over and pull it through all three stitches. Okay. And we're going to go down the row, just grabbing that back loop only, going through that back loop only. So you see, back loop only and I hope y'all can see this especially you newbies go in underneath that back loop only which is the loop furthest away from your little body okay so you're gonna go all the way down the row and be careful that you don't accidentally grab this right here and look at it like this is your stitch you kind of want to turn it over see turn it and make sure you're looking from the top this is the stitch you're going to go in you're going to kind of turn that towards you so you can see this v is your stitch not this this is not your stitch okay that's a whole different ball game right there. And we're not in that ball game. We're in this ball game up here. All right. And we got a nice pretty V and you're going to work in the back of that V. Okay. So we're going to continue to go in through the back loop and pull through all three loops. So just like this. Yarn over, grab that back loop, go in under that back loop, pull through all three loops. Yarn over, go in under the back loop, come out, pull through all three loops. Yarn over, underneath that back loop, come out, and pull through all three loops. So, we're going to continue to do this to the end of the row, okay? Now, also, this is your third row. Whoops. 
this is your third row. I mean, gosh, I'm saying the third row. Lordy, you can tell I didn't get any sleep, y'all. Worried about my baby. Um, but yeah, so this is our second row. <laughs> second, not third. I can count. <laughs> I just don't know why I said third row, but yeah. So we're going to continue to do, to do this. Make sure your stitches don't get too tight. And going in that back loop, we're going to go all the way to the end. Okay? All the way to the end of our row. We are almost there. And when we get there, I'm going to turn this video off. And I'm going to let you um, work on this a little bit. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to finish it. Okay? But... We're almost here to the end of this, and I'm going to give you another little tip, and then I'm going to let you work on this, and I'm going to give you the instructions for what you're going to do for the next 28 rows, okay? So that will be for the next 28 rows. Oh, goodness. You know, I'm really tired, <laughs> but I'm so happy to be doing this little tutorial for y'all. I've been wanting to get this uh, done for a long time, but you know, I did four versions of this cow in order to get it perfect. Yeah, four, four versions. Okay, so we're at the end of our row, and looky here. Here's that stitch marker. And what this stitch marker is telling us is that this is the very last stitch in this row. So we're going to grab that loop underneath that loop, pull our yarn through, yarn over, and make our last stitch. Okay? And then we're going to take off our little stitch marker and we are simply going to move it up. We're going to move it up right here onto our chain. And I'm sorry, my hands are not working because it's early in the morning. And um, this RA has got my hands in a pickle. <laughs> And I do love pickles, but I don't love it when R.A. gets my hand in a pickle. All right. So I've moved my stitch marker up just like that. I'm going to chain one. And we're going to turn our work. And once again, remember, we're going into this very first stitch. Now this chain one is not our first stitch. So y'all don't get confused by this, okay? This is our first stitch. We're going to yarn over and we're going to go right under that back loop. Oop. Pull it up and go through all three loops. Yarn over, go through the back loop, pull it up and you see how we're making our stitches? And now look at this. Look how nice and look how nice this is. Do you see how nice and even this is? Okay? It's very even. Okay? And that's what we want. Do you see how nice and loose these stitches are? That's what we want. Okay? And what you're also going to see happen is you're going to see that you're going to get a row of ridges. And as you're working across, it's going to be horizontal. But when we seam this up, we will turn this and we will seam it up on this side. And see how nice our side looks? Because we went into the little bump instead of going into one of these. We did it uniformly all the way down 
into the middle bump and now it gave us a nice beautiful edge do y'all see that okay and so this is going to be our cowl when it's completed we will seam it up on this edge right here so right now what i want you to do is to continue going in the back loop only making sure that you're using those stitch markers so that you know where your next stitch is and i know that it can be a pain in the rear end to use a stitch marker you know especially for more experienced crocheters and if you really think you can keep your stitches uh, straight meaning that you have 27 stitches at all times then you can forgo these stitch markers but these stitch markers are super helpful because you never have to count ta-da that's like magic right who likes counting not me only count dracula likes to count right okay so we have two rows i want you to do 28 more rows yes 28 so you are going to have a total of 30 rows okay now don't get confused and start trying to crochet on the side here no don't do it don't do it just keep turning your work and remember your lines are always going to be horizontal while you're crocheting they're not going to be vertical until you seam up your work okay so i'm going to pause my little camera here and we're going to get our cal to 30 rows okay and then we're going to seam it up all right so get crocheting all right i'll be back okay everybody i'm back we have our 30 rows okay and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stitch up our cow and i'm just gonna use this pink yarn so that y'all can see my stitches okay because you know i want you to see them but um when seaming up your cow of course you want to use the same yarn if you have it and by the way this only took one and a half balls of the serenity chunky five yarn and there is a hundred and nine yards in this so i'm gonna say roughly 160 yards and then maybe a little extra to uh, seam up your work okay so it didn't take as much um, yarn as I originally thought that it would okay so that's also a good thing right now I'm gonna pull out my darning needle right here and we are going to sew this up now for those of you that don't know how to uh, seam up your work when you're working flat I'm gonna show you okay so you're gonna take your stitches and you're gonna you're going to line them up and you're gonna go under your first the both loops on both sides so you're going to have four strands one two three four which is just two loops so one loop two loops okay you're going to go under both and you're going to do a little whip stitch here and pull and then you're going to go up to your next one and you're going to go under both of those loops do a little whip stitch pull okay and you're going to continue to do this all the way up 
until your cowl is completely stitched up. All right. And when you get uh, finished with this, I'm just going to show you real quick. Um, when you're done with this, um, the way to finish this off, instead of me doing this whole thing here, the way to finish this when you get all the way up to the edge up here, you're going to take your needle and you're going to go underneath before you pull that uh, last couple of stitches tight. So you're going to do that. Then you're going to go under the next set. And same exact thing. Okay? You're going to take your needle and loop it under there. And you're going to go up to your last one. And you're going to do the exact same thing. Going to... Woo! Sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> I just got a... Woo! Sorry about that. Got a sharp little pain there. I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. We're going to put the needle right under here and do it again. So we're going to do that for about three stitches because that really helps secure your seam. And then you can go back through and just weave in, you know, weave in your, um, your thread. Okay. So go down in, into that seam and just like this, go down into your seam. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to cross over to this side and come back up. So it's down on one side of your seam, very close to the seam inside this seam right here, but back up on the other part. Okay. And that's how you really secure that stitch. So that's not going to go anywhere. You see that? I hope you can see this since I'm using the pink thread. Okay? So if anybody has any questions about this, you can email me at lovethisyarn at yahoo.com. Lovethisyarn at yahoo.com. And I will be happy to answer any questions that you have. Okay? And also, if you don't have a bulky weight, five to do this you can use two strands of a DK weight that you hold together you know you just you're just gonna hold two strands together like this not in the bulky five but you can do it with a DK weight and you can even do it with a light worsted weight a light number four okay and it'll give you the same the same effect all right so you guys thank you so much for spending time with me um i'm so happy i finally got this tutorial posted i hope you enjoy it and once again if you have any questions email me or leave a comment below and i will be happy to help you okay um, I appreciate you all very much, and um, I'm so happy that you continue to come back to my channel and that you leave me such kind and supportive uh, comments. I love y'all. Okay, have a great day, everybody. Um, we're going to go take our baby back down to school. So I'll talk to you all soon, okay? Have a wonderful Monday. Bye!